we need to understand that the Bible is divinely inspired of God. It has been given to us supernaturally by holy men that were moved by the Holy Ghost. They operated and moved and functioned in a realm that the natural human mind cannot comprehend. Matter of fact, it says the carnal mind cannot understand the things of God because it is spiritually, spirit and spiritually discerned. It's a higher law, it's a higher realm, it's a higher principle. That's what we want to talk about tonight. Before I got born again, before I knew Jesus Christ, before I had a revelation of who Christ was, I, I did not understand the Bible. Didn't understand the book. To me, it was gobbledygook. I guess it'd almost be like in the natural, if you take a kindergarten, someone who's in kindergarten, and you give them a book on trigonometry, or uh, they would just look at it and probably take a coloring crayon and write all over it. Uh, would have no idea what in the world it was talking about. Well, actually, the Word of God is even operating on a higher realm than that. So if we take a look here in Hebrews chapter 11, beginning with verse 1, and it begins with this statement, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence or the proof of things not seen. Now, faith is uh, just that in it by itself is a declaration. What faith is, faith is now. Faith is not past. Faith is not future. Faith is now. If it's not now, it's not faith. It could be acknowledgement. It could be mental assent, but faith is always now. That's why Jesus said, whatever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive and you shall have. When do you receive? When you believe. Uh, I've made this statement, and I, I've fallen into the same trap. A lot of times we're trying to get from God that which has already been given to us. For instance, the Bible says we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, but we don't see it because to us it's not now. Or how about the fact that by his stripes ye were healed? Well, if you were, you was. Well, if you was, you am. If you am, you is. <laughs> when was I healed? Now. When is now? When, when I believe it. It's right now. Uh, we'll see tonight that uh, understanding God is not based upon your intellect, your feelings, your circumstances, uh, your education, your background, anything else but faith. Now faith is. Now faith is. It's an invisible substance, even as oxygen is a substance or carbon monoxide is a substance it's invisible but it is a substance the atomic world is a substance but it's invisible now faith is now faith is faith faith in what faith in god faith is trust confidence reliance dependence uh on god faith produces obedience faith produces works faith produces evidence now faith is the substance, it is the substance of things hoped for. Uh, so you don't have to hope for that which is now yours, but faith would give substance to your hopes. Our hopes are based upon the promises and the blessings and the provisions of God. So faith is the substance of things that we're hoping for, it is the evidence of Things not seen. That's, where, well, that's why the world can't understand this stuff. You can't see it, but it's real. Right now, according to the scripture, there are angelic beings in this room with us. Not only that, but the Bible says, where can you go where God's presence is not there? He's everywhere. You go to the highest mountains, you go to the lowest valleys, he's there. I don't see him, I don't feel him. It doesn't matter, he's there. Well, I don't believe this room is full of oxygen. Well, if that was true, you'd fall over dead. It's full of oxygen. Can't feel it, can't see it, but you're experiencing it. Uh, the reality of God, we don't see it, we don't feel it, but we're experiencing it. 
Now, we can't see the evidence of God all the way around us if you have eyes to see. But now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Then it tells us here in the next verse, it says, For by it the elders obtained a good report. Now, the elders he's talking about, uh, we, we actually could declare that it is those it is speaking about in Hebrews 11. David, Samson, Jephthah, Joshua, you know, Rahab the harlot, on and on and on. And so it says, for by it the elders obtained a good report. A good report is a positive report. It's like when the children of Israel went to uh, the Jordan River and they went across the 12 spies and they came back and gave a report. Two gave a good report. It was a report of faith. It was a report that did not deny the existence of the enemies, the Canaanites, Hittites, Jebusites, Amalekites, all the other ites, but it declared that God was more than enough to overcome them. The evil report was, we're dead, we're grasshoppers, the enemy's going to conquer us, we can't take the land. Well, wait, Joshua and Caleb said, you can take the land, you can overcome, you can prevail. Why? Based upon who God is, not based upon how you feel, not based upon how it looks, not based upon people's opinions, not based upon the circumstances, but based upon what God said. That's what faith is. Faith is built on nothing but the word of God, the will of God, the divine nature of God. God is not a man that he should lie. And it says that we have two positive anchors or assurities that it is impossible for God to lie and that what God promised he will perform. So we have a, 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 an anchor of our soul. Through faith we understand. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand. Now, now I want you to say that. By faith I understand. It, it, we we want to look about this to not talk about this. How do we understand? How? I just don't understand. Well, you're not walking by faith. By faith, we understand. By faith, we understand. The light gets turned on. You perceive. You see it for once and for all. Um, comprehension comes. It's spiritual comprehension. See, by faith, I understand that by his stripes I'm healed. Yeah, but, no, there is no buts. There is no buts in faith. It's yea and amen. All the promises in Christ are yea and amen. I understand by faith. By faith, we understand. We could, we could really just cut it off right there, but we're going to go deeper than that. By faith, we understand what? that the worlds were framed. Now, I, I guess we just had a, one, of our, um, uh, one of our rockets or satellites or spacecraft go past Pluto, and they got images of Pluto. And it's way out there to us, but it's nothing compared to you know, the whole universe compared to what's out there. But by faith, we understand that God said, let there be. And there was. Now, faith is a higher realm than the five senses. Faith created everything. Faith made everything. God having faith in himself. Now, we don't have faith in ourselves because that wouldn't be faith. Faith in another religion is not really faith. They're misusing the word because true faith is a substance. Everything else is just a belief system. It's a, a, a mental uh, declaration, but not faith. Faith is a substance. Faith is more than just a thought, an opinion, an ideal, a belief system. Faith gives substance to hope. Like when I broke my foot, slammed it down the fifth time, it was made whole. Like when I had a hernia, laid my hands on it, and it was gone overnight. When I had tumors, I spoke to them, they were gone. When I broke my 
index finger and it was big black and blue and swollen. And I said to my children, tomorrow morning when I get up, my finger will be normal, and it was. That's a substance. When we prayed over little Ruthie Beck, whose hand was covered with warts, backwards and forwards, and the next morning they brought her back, and the warts were gone. Uh, I was just preaching um, uh, at a meeting, a miracle rally in Baltimore on Sunday afternoon, and we saw miracle after miracle. Matter of fact, I was, I was preaching, I saw this kind of husky young African-American gentleman, I pointed my finger at him, and I said, God wants to baptize you in the Holy Ghost. And I knew right away God wanted to fill him. And so when I gave the altar call, he came down, and he said, I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I said, okay. I said, I'm going to lay hands on you, and you've got to make like a child. He said, what? I said, a child just makes a noise, and words begin to form. I said, the minute I lay hands on you and command you to be baptized in the Holy Ghost, just put out a noise and you'll have a new language. And he did. And he began to speak a wonderful brand new language by the Spirit of God. See? How? By faith we understand these things work. He therefore that worketh miracles among you. Does he do it by the works of law or by the hearing of faith? By faith. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. See, God's given us that which we frame, we use to frame by faith, the word of God, right here. By the word of God. He sent his word and he healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. He said, I will worship towards thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Thy word is forever settled in heaven. By faith, we understand that the words were framed by the word of God. What? The spoken word. Genesis 1, God said, God said, God said, I think it's nine times he said in Genesis 1. And every time he said, it came to pass, and it came to pass, and it came to pass, and it came to pass. Every time God spoke, faith gave substance to what he said. Now, death and life is in the power of the tongue, and they that eat the love the fruit, they, eat, they, they who love it will eat the fruit thereof. If we understand this power, in our words as we speak the will, the mind, and the word of God. Also, as we speak that which is contrary to the word of God, demonic spirits go to work. We open the door for the enemy. We begin to say that which is contrary to what God has word said. It says, the angels of the Lord were created. Listen, God's created his angels to hearken to his word. That's what he created them for. He created angels to hearken to his word, not to our feelings, not to opinions, not to our ideals, not to our philosophy or theology or doctrines, but to the word of God. This, this see, college psychiatrists who are not born again or philosophers or the men of wisdom of this world, they hear this, and to them it's, it's, it's gobbledygook, it's dumb, but that's because it's on a higher realm. It's on, a, it's on the realm of creation. It's in a dimension where all things are possible. It's that place where God himself dwells and lives and abides. And that's where we will live forever. Now, don't misunderstand me. There is substance because now faith is the substance of things hoped for. We have evidence of the substance by the chairs we're sitting on, by the bodies we're living in, by the food we eat, by the light of the sun that we enjoy. The substance of faith has been manifested because God had confidence, trust, reliance in himself. The Bible says if some do not believe God, it doesn't move God. God cannot deny himself. So if people don't believe in God, it doesn't have to shake my faith. See, I, I know God exists. I know God is real. I know God does what he says he'll do. And so it says, by faith we understand. Say, by faith I understand. Could you say that? By faith I understand. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen, things we do see now, we're not made of things which do appear. That which we see was made by the invisible substance of faith. So we're on the other side 
of the accomplishment or the fulfilling of faith. But now there's things that we are hoping for that if we will trust and believe and rely and depend and have confidence on God will become physical in the realm where you can see, touch, see, smell, and hear. I, I know for years, God put it in my mouth. Mike and his three sons, Mike and his three sons. Well, it's pretty apparent that Mike had three sons. But before that happened, I was on the other side of confessing it because I believed it and I got it. Abraham is a good example. Uh, matter of fact, let's just look at Abraham for a moment. Look there in Romans. Jump over here to Romans. And we'll take a look here in Romans chapter 4. Let's go to Romans 4. And if you look here in verse 17, God had led Abraham out of the city of the Chaldeans, told him he was going to give him all the land that as far as his eyes could see. He also told him that he was going to give him uh, descendants, as many as the sands of the seashore and the stars of heaven. Now, that's a lot of... Well, how was that going to begin? With one child. His name was Isaac. That's how it was going to happen. One child. And if you look here in verse 17, as it is written, notice, it is written, he had the word of the Lord. Now, who wrote it? He wrote it. He heard the voice of God, and he wrote it down. Uh, I do it all the time. I was showing my son Stephen. He came to me this morning, and every 10 minutes when he gets revelation, he wants to talk to me. And I said, Stephen, you can't do this. I, I'm, I'm writing a book. I'm working on a book. You can't come to me. And I gave him a pad and a pen. I said, write it down. Uh, don't be running to me. Write it down. About 15, 20 minutes later, he come running back to me with it written down. <laughs> no, write it down. And Abraham heard from God, wrote it down, and it says, as it is written, this is what he wrote down, this is what God spoke to him, I have made thee a father of many nations. That's what he heard the voice of God say to him. He wrote it down. And then, before him whom he believed. He believed it. Okay. You said you made me father of many nations. Now, you understand, he did not believe this in the beginning. And he leaned to the understanding of his own mind, and he listened to the counsel of his wife, and he went into a woman by the name of Hagar, who was a servant of Sarah, and by her conceived a son and named him Ishmael, who was a work of the flesh. So don't get discouraged if you don't always get it right the first time. <laughs> We don't always get it right the first time. Abraham, who was the father of faith, did not get it right the first time. Actually, it, it took him from the time, I, I think, from Ishmael was born until uh, finally God showed up and said, oh, by the way, Sarah, your wife is going to have a child. And he argued with God. Sometimes you'll find yourself arguing with God because your natural mind kicks in. It's the flesh kicks in. And uh, when God said, hey, listen, your wife Sarah is going to have a child a year from now, he said, oh, no, no, Lord, uh, Ishmael, Ishmael. He said, no, not Ishmael, Isaac. And when Sarah heard this word, she laughed out loud. And God said to her, uh, Sarah, you just laughed. And she lied. She said, I didn't laugh. God said, you, you did laugh, and your son's name is going to be Isaac because that means laughter. He was saying, I'm going to get the last laugh. Let, let me tell you, in the world, the devil's not getting the last laugh. He's not. God's going to get the last laugh. And matter of fact, all night long, I had a divine supernatural visitation of the Holy Spirit. It was mind-boggling. And um, I'm going to share it Sunday morning how God's going to get the last laugh. God is about to do, and I believe we will be here on the earth to see God do some mind-boggling, amazing things to where every human being on earth will know without a shadow of a doubt there is a God in heaven, but that does not mean they're going to follow him. You think about Pharaoh. All of the Egyptians knew there was a God. You know, he said, I am the Lord and I change not. If God ever did it once, he is going to do it again. He is going to do it again. And that's a whole other message. I'll share that Sunday morning. But as it is written, I have made thee a father 
of many nations. Now, that's what he heard God say to him. When God spoke that to him, <clears throat> he didn't believe it right away. I believe through the years, God kept saying and kept speaking and kept on reminding him, remember Abraham what I said, remember Abraham what I said. And finally, one day, it clicked inside of his heart, and it became faith. Faith is when the word of God becomes more real to you than your circumstances. Now, now don't let that slip by. It may sound very, very simple, but it's very profound. Faith is when God's word and will becomes more real to you than the physical world you live in. I'll give you an example. Faith, which is the opposite, fear, which is the opposite of faith, it, it, you see it in people's lives. They become paranoia. They become afraid. They, they, they're overwhelmed by, the, by that which does not even exist. Have you ever run into people who were, had, had paranoia? That every time they had a pain, they thought they had cancer or this or that. Well, that's demonic, isn't it? It's the opposite of faith that brings death. It's the spirit of unbelief. Well, there is a spirit of faith. As it is written, we believe, therefore have we spoken even as it has been written. We speak it because we believe it. Now, what should you do if you don't believe it? Keep speaking it until you believe it. Um, the best person to convince you that God's word is real is you. The best person to convince you that God's word is real is you. You believe you more than anybody else. <laughs> you do. You do. I'm not saying we believe in us, but we believe what we're saying. That's what's frightening. You'll run into people who are habitual liars, chronic liars and uh they absolutely believe what they're saying is true, even though it is completely wrong. They're self-deceived. Well, I think Abraham began to say what well, God said. I am the father of many nations. I am the father of many nations. I, I have walked the floor many times and declared what God said to me, even though I didn't feel it, I didn't see it, I didn't experience it, and I didn't believe it yet. But the day came when I believed it. Whew. I know when it came to this struggle over us <clears throat> not losing the land through sheriff sale that I knew the fight was in my heart and not with attorneys. And I could take you to the place and the time and the moment when finally it hit me. Wow, God, you have taken care of this, haven't you? <laughs> it became real to me. See, until it's real to me, unless it's simply God's mercy... It won't do anything. So he says, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations be, before him whom he believed God. You notice the word even in the King James or other translations was not originally there. God, whom he believed God. Say, I believe God. I believe God. What do you believe God for? What he said. Whatever he said, I believe it. I, I believe he meets my needs. I believe he'll never leave me nor forsake me. I believe if I confess my sins, he's faithful and just to forgive me and to cleanse me from all righteousness. I believe if I cry out, help, he'll help me. I, 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 I believe it. I believe God. Why? Who quickeneth the dead. Now, this is God's character. This is God's nature. This is what you need to understand by faith. Say, understand by faith. This is what you need to understand by faith. This is who God is. He's not, he's not like us. We'll look at that maybe in just a minute. He's not like us. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are his ways higher than our ways, and his thoughts than our thoughts. This is what God is like. He quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. That's the kingdom of God. That's cr true Christianity. Christianity doesn't call those things which are as they are, but you'll find most Christians do in this day and age. Most people who call themselves Christians call those things 
than are as they are. Oh, my back is killing me. Oh, I just, I just feel like God doesn't love me. No, it's all lies of the devil. Oh, Lord, I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how I'm going to pay this bill. I know you said you meet my needs, but the bill ain't paid. Well, listen, that's what the world does. The world calls those things that are as they are. That which they see, not God. God doesn't do that. God decides what he wants and calls it into existence. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? I remember one time, and, and, and you can read in our books, my wife and I, we got back from Germany, and I, I just, when we got back, I said, honey, we don't really need a nice car, you know, because I'm not covetous. I don't want to be covetous. I said, we just need an old boat of a car. Let's hold hands and believe God for like an old Pontiac or something. And sure enough, in a couple of days, uh, we were staying at her grandma's house, Viola Flasher, and she got a phone call and said, uh, Brother Mike, and she called me brother, even though I was her pastor at one time, uh, the neighbors have an old Buick, and they heard that you were back from Germany, and they're really kind of embarrassed, but they feel like they're supposed to give you this car. I said, yep, that's it, thank you. <laughs> so we got this big old Buick, I think it was a Buick, big old boat wide, long, flat, you know. So I went and spoke at a meeting. We drove it around. It drank gasoline like it was going out of style. In those days, gas wasn't that expensive, though. And I had spoke at a full gas business events meeting one night, and it was pretty late. We're coming home about a two-, three-hour drive, and the red light went on. It was overheating. Now, I should have pulled over and put water in it, but I was so tired. I just said, you know what, I'm not stopping. I just got stubborn. I I'm sure none of you ever get stubborn and do something you know you shouldn't do. But I decided I'm driving this car home. So, and then before you know it, the engine is making all kinds of noise, and it is ticking and tacking and screeching. And now I'm speaking to the engine. I said, you will get us home. You will get us home. You will get us home. And Michael was in the back seat in his car seat asleep. And, you know, so I said, Kathy, agree we'll get home. And I should have just put water in it. I finally got it home, and we pulled into Kathy's <coughs> grandma's house, the engine must have been red hot. It froze up as I pulled into the yard. It got us home. Well, we're sitting in the car, and I said, honey, let's hold hands, and I know exactly what we need. I said, uh, we need a pickup truck. Do you agree with me for a pickup truck? Yes. I said, okay, I really want a Ford pickup truck. Would you agree with me for a Ford pickup truck? I'm not exaggerating at all. Okay, yes. I said, well, I want an automatic. Okay. And I, I'm, I'm making a list of everything I want. I'm not asking for a new pickup truck. I'm saying I want a Ford pickup truck with a 302 engine, an automatic. And you know what? I said, I want that pickup truck to be black. Let's believe God for a black pickup truck. Okay. I said, you know what? We also need a cab on the back, a cap that we can put our stuff in because I had tents. Okay, so we held hands and we believed, we agreed. Now, the next morning, somebody was using one of our tents, Sparky Price up in Huntington, PA, for his church. And so we had to go up there. I wasn't really speaking, but I told him I would be at the meeting. And so uh, my, uh, Kathy's grandma had friends who had like a brand new car, and they were willing to loan it to us. I said, wonderful. So we drove the car up to where the tent meeting was uh, at above Huntington, PA, got there, and we went into the meeting. Well, after the meeting... Uh, this couple walked up to us, and they said, well, we noticed you have a nice vehicle. And I didn't say, oh, no, no, it's not ours. I just said yes. Uh, well, we, we just felt like God told us that we're supposed to give you a car or give you a vehicle. I said, okay, be obedient. And they said, okay, well, we'll give it to you then. I said, um, where is it? They didn't tell me what it was. They said, well, it's uh, right down the road. We live right down the road, and it's sitting behind our barn. And uh, do you want to go see it? And I said, well, yeah, I'll go see it because I didn't have a vehicle, you know. So we are following them and got to the house, the uh, farmhouse, didn't see nothing, walked around, the, went to, into the back barn, behind the barn, and there was a pickup truck, a Ford pickup truck, a black Ford pickup truck, an automatic with a 302 engine and a cap on the back. In less than 24 hours. <laughs> but that's what it is. Faith, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Because how does God operate? Listen, this is how God operates. It says, 
He quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be as though they were. Those things which are not as though they were. He speaks it into existence. So what do we do? We speak the will of God into existence. Now, verse 18. When who against hope believed in hope. Now he's talking about Abraham. This is all the farther we're going to get tonight. By the way, I'll pick it up tomorrow night. Who against hope believed in hope. There is such a wonderful revelation of how God operates in this set of scriptures. Who against hope. Now, now by the faith, hope, and love. There is what we call natural hope. A natural hope, something is going to happen. But see, uh, there was no natural hope. See, if Sarah would have still been young, if she would have been fertile, if he would have still, was still young, if he could still have children, but all that hope was gone. There was no hope. Abraham is 99 years old. Sarah's 90. She had never been pregnant before. That's why he had gone into Hagar. It was impossible for her to have children. She's past what we call the, 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 the time of, uh, of, of bearing children. And Abraham was past that time. But Abraham said, you know what? I believe you, God. You said my wife is going to have a child a year from now. I believe it, I receive it, and I thank you for it. Thank you, Lord. That's how faith operates. Thank you, Lord. And we're going to see this. Who against hope believed in hope. What hope in what God said? His hope was what God said. Our hope is in what God has said. Like the experience I had last night, the visitation, what I had last night. I have great hope for a final outpouring of the Holy Ghost upon all flesh. That's what he said. I will pour out my spirit upon what? All flesh. All flesh. Say that, all flesh. Wow. He said he would. He said, as the waters cover the sea, so will my glory cover the earth. Right when the devil thinks he's got everything wrapped up, God said, watch this. I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Upon all flesh. Listen, who against hope believed in hope. Why? That he might become the father of many nations. He said, you know what? If that word is going to be fulfilled, then I'm going to have to believe what God has said. If that word is going to be fulfilled... It's going to require me to believe. Well, there's a lot of scriptures that have been spoken over us when it comes to healing, when it comes to provisions, when it comes to protection, when it comes to direction, when it comes to, uh, you know, whatever. If it's going to be fulfilled, we have got to believe it. How about victory over your flesh, victory over the devil, victory over the world? Uh, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory, even our faith. Faith, believing that what God said is true. He might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. According to what was spoken. Well, you know what? That God spoke it to him. Um, now, he could have doubted that he heard God. But we don't have to doubt because we've got the written word. It's already been written for us. And we know it's true. We know it's real. We know that heaven and earth shall pass away, but not one title, not one scripture, not one verse. And there's over eight, there's close to 8,000 verses in the New Testament. 260 chapters in the New Testament, 27 books. And he's promised, not including the Old Covenant. And notice what it says, who against hope believed in hope. Why? That he might become the father of many nations. According... To that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Now, verse 19 is shifting gears. It, it, here's the dynamics of faith. Being not weak in faith. This is, this is so vitally important. This is where many people miss it. They're weak in faith. There's 18 different levels of faith, you know. There's uh, great faith, strong faith. Uh, there is holy faith. There is pure faith. Uh, there is mustard seed faith. There's little faith. There's weak faith. 
but not being weak in faith. Faith in God. We're talking about trust, confidence, reliance, dependence, looking to God. And being not weak in faith, what did he do? He did not consider his own body. Now dead. Ah, notice he's not denying this. He acknowledges it. He did not consider, for in other words, he didn't meditate on the deadness of his body. He didn't go around saying, you know what, I, I'd have a child, but I'm 99 years old. Uh, I know God's will for me to have a child, but I'm 99 years old. He did not consider his own body. He didn't take it into account. Healing. I would be healed, but I got this lump. I would be healed, but I feel so bad. I would be healed, but I ripped my kneecap off. I'm just making a statement. I did. I ripped my kneecap off, but I didn't consider it. And it was about a two-week struggle, two weeks. My kneecap, I could grab it and move it all around. It was tore loose. Had a nurse, Helen Rhodes, who had done the same to her, Self, and she had an operation, and her knee was never the same. Two weeks, my leg felt like it was going to collapse. Every second, I did not consider that symptom. I said, you, I would speak to it. You lying devil. I'd grab my hand, put it on a kneecap, and it would move around. <laughs> I'd say, you lying devil. Yeah, but, 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 Pastor Mike. Pastor Mike, but. No, no buts. No buts. Buts don't get it. Faith gets it. And I think it was about two weeks, and one morning I got up, and I was healed, and that was back in about 1986, 87. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I'd rather trust God. I'd rather look to God. Now, Jesus said, when I come back to the earth, except for a muddy move of the Spirit, will there be, will there be faith left? That would take a hold of God and not let go. Who considered not his own body, now dead. He's not denying it. When he was about 100 years old, listen, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Oh, remember, he'd been trying to get her pregnant since they'd been married. I don't know how many years they were married. Maybe when she was a young girl and she was, he was a young man. And now she is 90 years old. I mean, that's a lot of time to sow seed with no harvest. I mean, he's trying to get her pregnant, man. Nothing's working. But one day God said, hey, Sarah's going to have a child. Matter of fact, he probably even stopped sowing seed. Just to be honest, he got Ishmael through Hagar, and God showed up and said, Abraham, it's time to sow seed. Your, your wife's going to have a child. And so now he went in onto her by faith. Said, okay, Sarah, you're going to have a baby. What? <laughs> you goofy old man. She even laughed at the word of the, of the Lord when she heard it. You goofy old man said, listen, you're going to have a child. God's going to get the last laugh. His name is going to be Isaac. And you'll have a child a year from now. And, but it says Sarah believed God. Something happened in Sarah. And something happened in Abraham. And yet the, uh, he did not even consider her the deadness of her womb. Listen, verse 20. He staggered not at the promise of God, listen to this now, through what? Unbelief. What? If he would have considered his body and considered the deadness of Sarah's womb, he would have been operating in unbelief. Now that's heavy. No, no, that's heavy. Most people, and myself many times, I'm not operating in faith. I'm operating in unbelief. And when we operate in unbelief, if we do get something from God, it's his mercy. There's been times I was not operating in faith, and God healed me, God delivered, God provided, God protected, but it wasn't my faith. It was just God's goodness. Aren't you glad for God's goodness? Has God ever helped you even when you weren't in faith? He's helped me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I wasn't in faith, but he wants us to move in faith. 
He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Okay, well, what did he do then? But was strong in faith. How? Giving glory to God. Not giving glory to the devil, not giving glory to the problem, not giving glory to the circumstance, not giving glory to the situation. He was strong in faith. Giving glory to God. How do you give glory to God? God, I thank you. My wife is pregnant. Praise the Lord. She's going to have a baby by the name of Isaac. And through Isaac, you're going to cause me to be the father of many nations. And my seed and my offspring will be like the sands of the seashore and the stars of heaven. What is he saying? He's saying what God says. He's thanking God. He's praising God. Now listen, he, he, he's not going around here trying to convince people it's going to happen. No, no, he's speaking to himself. You know, a lot of people in what we call the word of faith, they think they got to tell everybody, oh, I, I have this, I have that, I can do this, I can do No, 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 you, your glory, you're worshiping God. God, I thank you, I agree, I believe, I receive your word. You cannot lie. And you said, God, now you're not telling God what to do. You're simply embracing what God has said. Um... We'd have to go back and take a look at this just for a moment in, the, in Hebrews, but let's look here. He stayed not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Verse 21, why? Because he was fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now, it's not written, listen, this was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also, to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. For in other words, we can apprehend the promises of God if we'll believe God too. This was written for us. I, I, I'm going to show you, God said, I'm going to show you what Abraham did and how he did it, and why he did it, and when it did happen, and where it happened, and the process it happened by, which for you can apprehend the same. Because what I had for Abraham, I had for you. So let's close back up in Hebrews 11. I'm going to go back to Hebrews 11, and I'm going to jump down here. Uh such things by faith, by faith, by faith. It's all by faith, uh, by faith, uh, by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. Say by faith. by faith, by faith, by faith, through faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. Oh, crunched women received, they were stoned. These all obtained a good promise. Let's jump. I'm gotta find this a better country by faith. I don't mind if I just keep on saying by faith. Maybe it'll get into somebody's heart. By faith, by faith, for real, through faith. Sarah received seed. Verse 11, Sarah received seed to deliver a child. Okay, verse, look there in verse 13. And these all died in faith, not having received the promises. That means there was promises that had not yet happened. But having, now here's how faith works. Having seen them afar off, faith sees it. That's mine, that's true, that's right. Faith sees it. And we're persuaded, persuaded, convinced, and embraced them. That Greek word literally means to literally, mentally, emotionally, experience it. Remember, having not seen yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. It creates joy. Where there's faith, there's joy and there's peace. There's excitement. When you see it and you're persuaded by it, you get excited. The woman with the issue of blood, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, I will be Healed. It created excitement. It created energy. It created enthusiasm. She had spent all that she had. She was growing. She was weak in her body, but it created energy, and confessed 
So we see four elements there. They seen it because of what the word said. They were persuaded. They embraced it, and out of their mouth is coming the truth. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. I don't care how I feel. I don't care how it looks. I don't care what the enemy says. I don't care what people say. It's not open for discussion. You know, when I'm operating in faith, it's not arrogance. It's not pride. It's humility. It's meekness. It's, Lord, I, I, your word said and I, I believe it, I receive it, and I'm walking in it, and you said it, and, and this building is a good example. When, I, when we dug the footers and had no money and ordered to steal and had no money and began to put it together, um, just a young man, uh, 1985, I'm now, you know, you have to calculate, I'm now 59, so how many years ago was that? I was probably just right around 30-something, and I just believed, and it happened. And the way that God did it then, he still does it today, and he's not a respecter of people. Did you get something tonight? Well, give the Lord a hand clap. Shall we? Thank you, Lord, for your word. See, this ain't my wisdom. This ain't my revelation. This ain't my end.